my god, are you Tom Brady? No. Tom Brody. Who's that? And that's me. Hi, I'm Tom Brady, and I'm a crybaby, and I have a butthole in my chin. <laughs> butthole? Tom Brady could have made probably the same amount of money as a male prostitute. Trust me, I'm good at math. <laughs> I hate Tom Brady so much, but I have no legit reason to. He's a nice guy, but I hope they break his leg. <laughs> Tom Brady was listed ahead of his wife Giselle Bündchen in Forbes' recent list of the 100 most powerful celebrities. But last year, Tom was behind his wife. When asked to comment, Brady said, hey, we switch positions all the time, if you know what I'm saying. Ah, ah, ah. And then he high-fived the reporter. <laughs> you, Tom Brady. I hope your dog eats chocolate and gets really sick and throws up on your sock. That's <laughs> up. So uh, here's my Tom Brady story. I was there the day that Giselle met Tom Brady. No way. I was at the game. She came to the Chargers game in uh, San Diego, and I sat. I sit with the Kraft family, and I'm talking to her, and I'm helping her. She didn't really know. She was like, "What is the football?" She was like, <laughs> I, "I was walking her through it." And then I got to see them meet. I was there. We went down to the locker room, wow. and I'm telling you, she's beautiful. But then he's beautiful, yeah. and when they got together, we all just felt so ugly at that moment. Uh -huh. it, they were like white walkers. They just drained us of all our, our life energy and beauty. Is Michael Jordan officially the second best athlete of all time? Yes. That is the discussion. Yes. You think yes. 100%. Undis undis indisputable. Okay, now why? Give me, give me why. I mean, listen, look what Tom Brady did. Can you imagine Michael Jordan going to a second team and winning a championship? <laughs> yeah. I think he didn't even get to the playoffs yeah. Yeah, when 75% yeah. of your conference gets to but, the playoffs. But Akash, MJ was 40 years old. I know, I know. You MJ can't do 40. anything at 40? 40? How could he possibly compete with all these young bucks who are so athletic and brilliant? The game has completely changed. How could he compete with them at 40? Yep. I mean, know. how old was Tom? Oh, uh, Tom, 43? Oh, he was older. Much older. Interesting. Much older. Okay, okay, okay. Much older. Three okay. years, big difference. People make a big deal about, I was talking to uh, somebody's in a group chat, and they also brought up the different team thing. Yeah. I don't think people realize how yes. difficult it is to win with another team. It's incredibly hard. Also, but why? Break it down, why? You're going to a different system. Yes. You are, he's going to a different conference, so he's playing different teams pretty much all together. Every team he sees is different. If you're in the same team, you play almost half your schedule every year against the same division opponents. Right. He knows the Buffalo Bills inside and out. Now he's playing the Saints twice, and he got curb stomped twice. And then yeah. in the playoffs, he was like, no, nah, I got it now. Curb stomped. You know, it's, it's good now. <laughs> right, right. Now he's going to completely new personnel, completely new culture, completely new city. Yeah. Everything is different. Yeah. Everything is different. Yeah. But here's what Tom Brady is. Tom Brady is, you know, people that say like it's a vibe. Yeah. Tom Brady is a culture. I think that we don't know a lot about Tom Brady. Which I also like. I think that's cool. There's some mystery to him. He's a throwback. He's yeah. Marlon Brando. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's one of these figures that we get what he decides to give us. Yeah. He's got a sense of humor, clearly. Like, yep. on his Instagram, he's aware of the things that he's posting are funny. Mm -hmm. He's kind of culturally aware. Yep. Like, if you notice, like, even the music that he chooses in the videos, it's all hip-hop. Yeah. So everything's oh, it, yeah, right? Yeah. Like he's going for it. Like this is supposed to be MAGA Tom Brady. He's not doing a Luke Bryant nope. or whatever these fucking country nope. guys are. What's what's your boy who is dropping them bombs? Morgan, oh, my oh, guy. Morgan yeah. Whalen. Morgan Whalen, my he's, guy. He's not Morgan <laughs> Whalen. You know what I mean? Your boy, bro. He's one of you in the neighborhood. He might drop a couple of them. The coolest I would ever feel. <laughs> so while we'll never know if Tom Brady could impact the game in the same way that Michael Jordan could impact the game mm -hmm. because they don't, the sports don't compare yeah. in that way. We do know that he was able to motivate more people yes. to greatness than Jordan was. Yes. Just smiling ear to ear, smiling ear to ear. I can't remember the last time I was this happy.
I just, what, what a Sunday I just had. Woo! I got to tell you, man, I've never been so wrong in my life. A lot of you guys probably think that I'm going to gloat. I was so wrong about the balance bike. You know, I took my daughter out to the park and I figured it out. Finally, you got to like, you got to take them after they kind of, they get bored with it when they're on like the level. What am I talking about here? Tom Brady won his seventh fucking Super Bowl. Woo! Brady to Gronk twice. Woo! Leonard Fournette running that fucking ball just like I said. Just like I fucking said. Oh, I try to be humble, people. I can't on this one. I told you motherfuckers since back in November how beatable a team like Kansas City was. I told you. I fucking told you. Bill Belichick coaches the Cleveland Browns. They win that fucking game. They just didn't stick with their game plan to run. That's what you do. It's what you do. It's what the fuck I said. Oh, God damn it. I feel good. Sorry. Tom Brady, seven rings. Seven rings. He's one behind Belichick now for all you fucking cunts. Had a buddy of mine just going, oh, Bill Belichick's probably drinking gasoline right now. Bill Belichick has eight rings. Okay, Tom Brady just passed Michael Jordan. It's unfucking believe. I've never been. I, I was rooting for Tampa Bay in that game. It was like the Patriots were playing. That's how much I gave a shit. I couldn't believe it. I was actually upset with myself. And when they went for it, for that fucking touch, when they went for it on fourth and goal in the second quarter, I, I my, my family had to leave the room. I was like, "What are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? They don't get it. Why would you do that?" I just realized that's the Wahlberg line when, when his mother's tearing down his posters and boogie nights. Don't do it. Why would you do that? Stop it. That's literally, I bitched about them having three points in their back pocket in a fucking championship game and not kicking that field goal. I bitched about that until about eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. That's when I could finally relax because that's how good Kansas City's offense is. Um, but I got to tell you, two a fucking T. To a fucking T. They did exactly what the fuck a stand-up comedian said they were going to do. That's not bad. Come on, people. You got to give it up. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gloat on this one. Double Tyreek. Let fucking Kelsey beat you underneath. He's going to get a bunch of yards, but he's not going to get it all on one fucking play. Then even if Kansas City comes out and scores quick, you don't, you don't lose your composure. Stick with the fucking run. Wear down their fucking defensive line. You're going to be running downhill, getting first downs, chewing up clock in the second fucking half. It's exactly, exactly what the fuck happened. Oh, oh, Freckles won some fucking money on that Super Bowl. I bet the coin toss heads. Oh, fuck, I missed the Gatorade. I said blue Gatorade. I think I lost on that one. Um... I didn't go red. It just seemed too obvious. Both teams had red, you know. And I know, I know that Gatorade didn't make pewter. In the blue, I always thought tasted pretty good. Oh, the lime. I should have gone with the lemon lime. I don't even know. what. I mean, maybe I won. I have no idea. I didn't even look. I was just so fucking excited in seeing Brady to Gronk for two touchdowns. And then Antonio Brown, who Patriots Nation still loves. Even though you, you, you got that victory against the Dolphins, uh, you know, in 2019 or whatever. Um, I don't know. All, every, all my Pats f- friends that are all Pats fans are going fucking nuts. We're all so happy for the guy. So don't believe any of this fucking bullshit. I saw on the NFL Network or some crap. They were like, how do Patriots fans feel? And these fucking assholes already had their minds made up of how Pats fans felt. So they had to look and sift and sift until they find six fucking jerk-offs that will say what they wanted them to say. You should have seen these Pats fans. They look like they went to, like, fucking the Patriots pro shop. They had so much Pats gear on. I'm calling bullshit on it. It's like, well, it's like if your girlfriend broke up with you, then she invites you to the wedding. Nobody says that. Nobody said that. But, you know, they went out and they... The same way anytime back in the day when they would show a Patriots game, they used to fucking... They'd go down to the beach and they'd show, like, a lighthouse. Like, I, can't, I can tell you, dude... My 27 years I lived in Massachusetts, the only lighthouse I ever saw was when I, when I came back four years later and they built a fake one at Gillette Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> it 
making us all out to be lobster fishermen and tying sailor knots and eating clam chowder, whatever the fuck it is. With, you know, like everybody in New York's going, hey, I'm walking here. I'm holding a hero. You know, and everybody in Philly, all they do every day is just stand in line for a steak and cheese. It's so fucking stupid, but that's what they do. Anyway, um, I'm all over the map here. I am so fucking happy for Tom Brady, Gronk, Tampa, the fans of Tampa. That was just, I mean, Jesus Christ. The amount of Brady bashers throughout the guy's fucking career. I've, I've just never seen anything like it. Um. And this is the one I think that he needed that'll just fight. It'll even shut Jim Irsay up, I think. What's, what the fuck are they going to say now? The guy beat Drew Brees in New Orleans, Aaron Rodgers in the Packers in fucking Lambeau. And then he, he beat the, uh, the next greatest quarterback ever, uh, Patrick Mahomes. Fucking unbelievable. Unbelievable. Reminds me of when Eli and the Giants beat the Patriots, undefeated Patriots. They beat Dallas in Dallas. They beat some a wild card team, I think, and they beat somebody else. I think the Cowboys in Dallas. And then they beat the undefeated Patriots. As far as undeniable championships, I put it up with those uh, 2008 Giants. And I never thought the 2008 Giants got their due because it wasn't that they won. It was that the Patriots lost because they were undefeated. And I really feel if we had one loss and went in there, um, they would have got the respect they deserved. And God knows Eli never did with the fucking New York media. They used to talk about that guy, you know, right to the end of his career. Like he never, he never won anything. I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird, uh, the, uh, East coast media is, uh, brutal. It's fucking brutal. <laughs> Boston is just as brutal. At least it was when I was there. So, um, God damn, what a fucking game. Just to watch them execute it so fucking perfectly. I mean, the whole Patrick Mahomes to no touchdowns, no touchdown uh, uh, passes. I mean, he had like 100 yards in the first half. It was just textbook, 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 textbook. Okay, so there you go, all you young football fans. Remember this Super Bowl. Okay, I'm not taking anything away from the Chiefs, but I'm telling you. When you have an unbelievable offense, but only a decent defense, you are, you are beatable. And the deeper you go into the playoffs, the more beatable you are because the better the team you play week after week after week. And they finally, you know, everybody knows how to beat them. They just, the AFC just does not have a fucking team either with experience. Cleveland is the fucking team. Yo, let's talk about a real issue at hand. Trash piling up, it's time to take a stand. From plastic bottles to styrofoam cups. Our planet is drowning, it's time to wake up. Garbage trucks roll, streets lined with waste. But where does it go? It's not a race. To the landfill and mountain of despair. But we can change course, show that we care. Trash talk, it's more than just words It's about actions, the change we deserve Reduce, reuse, recycle That's the plan for a cleaner, greener earth Let's take a stand Trash talk, it's more than just words It's about actions, the change we deserve Reduce, reuse, recycle That's the plan for a cleaner, greener earth Let's take a stand Single-use plastics, they gotta go From straws to bags, it's time to say no Bring your own cup, your own tote bag Small steps add up Let's not lag Sorting all waste It's not that tough Recycling centers That's where it's rough Separate paper Glass and cans Give them a new life That's the plan Trash talk, it's more than just words It's about actions, the change we deserve Reduce, reuse, recycle That's the plan for a cleaner, greener earth Let's take a stand but it's not just about the stuff we toss It's about the mindset, there's no loss Composting food waste, it's a win Turning scraps to soil, let's begin Educate the masses, from young to old The future's at stake, let the story unfold For the sake of our planet, our home sweet home Let's clean up our acts, together we roam Trash talk, it's more than just words It's about actions, the change we deserve Reduce, reuse, recycle That's the plan for a cleaner, greener earth Let's take a stand Team um, With the right coaching and a little more experience Can match up with a team like that And as I said, I, I saw the fucking 
You just saw Tampa Bay beat Kansas City. You saw the Giants beat the undefeated Patriots in 2008 or whatever the fuck it was. 2001, you saw the Patriots beat the greatest show on turf. You saw the Dirty Birds beat the 15-1 Vikings. Fucking Randall Cunningham and Randy Moss looking like juggernauts went into their own building and beat them all the way back. All the way back. Run and gun Bills. Giants beat them. Fucking Elway with all his fucking receivers. Giants shut them down. The next year, the Redskins shut them down. I've just seen it time and time again. I saw the 49ers shut down Dan Marino. 48 touchdown passes back when that fucking meant something. In 5,000 yards, they came out in 84 and beat them. Um, I saw the Raiders come and beat the Redskins. You've just seen it time and time again. A defense... What's a running game? Shuts. You just have them sitting on the sidelines like fucking Bernie Sanders at the inauguration. Um, All right. I am done gloating. Okay. I was so fucking right about that game. And I got the money in my pocket tomorrow to prove it. I never talk shit. But here's the balance, which I was trying to do. I was trying to come on this podcast and be humble. I really was. But I was just so fucking excited. I mean, the game literally just ended 15 minutes ago. (laughs) 